Blackstone Millville Regional School Committee for December 12th to order. If you could all please rise for the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will begin with uh, introduction of members. I'm Steve Tringali from Millville. Brian Faulkner, Millville. Thomas Gallagher, Blackstone. Morgan McCarthy, Millville. Blackstone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Robin, Blackstone. Wendy Greenstein, Someone Blackstone. Aaron Bonacco, Millville. Uh, Perry Davis, the superintendent of schools. Okay, we will begin with the report of the student representatives. You want to go first? You want me to go? Yeah, I'll go. All right. So for um, student council this month, we have next Friday, we have our annual pep rally which is probably the highlight of the school year for everyone. All the grades compete against different like spirit events. We have our uh, spirit week leading up to it. So there'll be um, different spirit days. Like this year we're trying a new one. Our first one is um, America Monday, America. which is just kind of like American Pride America. <laughs> Monday. So. America Monday. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we have a new one. It's called like salad dressing day where like we dress up like um, the seniors got Caesar. So they'll dress up like Greek. Like like togas or whatever, and then um like we have like ranch dressings like cowboys and stuff, and just something different that we thought we'd try. And we have our um, class color day for our pep rally on Friday. Um, Neon day Wednesday. Then, yeah, we have a few others. Um, there's not really much going on right now. <laughs> kind of winding down before a break, and then so pep rally is really the big thing coming up for uh, student council and everything this. Um, well, I have for NHS so far in the past month, we just had our honorable breakfast last Thursday and we actually had a freshman's parent is a owner of a Dunkin' in Pawtucket and they donated about like I think 20 dozen boxes of donuts for us. So we had plenty of food for everyone and they also donated hot chocolate. So it was a huge success in the morning for us. Um, we have our hat and mittens drive that we run every year that we will donate to the food pantry down in Blackstone. Um, we're doing a blanket drive this year, and people have started their empty bowl, their bowls, creating their bowls for the empty bowl dinner, which will be in February. So every member in our committee has to make their own bowl, like from hand, clay, and everything. <laughs> and then they raffle them off at our dinner that we run in February. Um, we have a new thing we're trying this year that I guess is actually done in a lot of other schools, and it's a gingerbread building contest. So we're doing it it's this Tuesday, and you had to register with teams of four. And um, you have three hours to create a gingerbread house, and you can bring in whatever you want to build on. And winners of that will gain spirit points towards pep rally. The NHS is also doing letters to Santa, because one of our members, her dad is a mailman, and so he, she's going to bring in letters, and the members will fill out letters to return to those people who wrote Santa letters. Um, sports season, it's now winter season, so I play basketball for the girls team, and there's basketball, hockey, and winter track, and those are, and cheerleading, and those are the main winter activities that are going on. Basketball's first games, we have girls are home tomorrow against Randolph, starting at 4, and then varsity's at 5.30, and then the boys play their first game away on Saturday in Burrowville. So, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. Questions, yes, I have a question. So I'd like a little explanation of this picture in the um, Pony Express of this uh, powder puff game here. Oh, see, yeah, a, the powder puff game. Somebody made the front page here. It looks familiar. I actually haven't seen that yet. No? It's on the back page, it's too. It's a free copy for you. Oh, oh that was um, something that the student council ran. It was where the um, we let girls from all the grades sign up, and I think they paid $8. It was enough for them to get a shirt that they wore during the game. So it was the teams were the... Uh, Freshmen and seniors against the sophomore and juniors, and um, what was I gonna say? Oh, the freshmen and seniors won against the sophomores and juniors by it was it was not I think a close it was, game. I think it was fifty six <laughs> yeah. to six. It was, like, it was a it was a little six. bit of it was a little bit of a blow, but it was fun. It was something that um, everyone seemed like they enjoyed. So hopefully they'll be doing it again next year. I know it's something that we haven't been able to do obviously without the football team, and then now that we had that, it was a those. Are something we get points for that goes towards pep rally too. So, yeah. So nice that game was thing. fun for especially the girl seniors because like watching the football season and then you get to the chance to go out and play. And the seniors and freshmen actually had a practice the day before, 
So we like bonded with uh -huh. the freshmen. Oh, I see. Uh, there's the 50 point spread right there. Hey, yeah. So um, the freshmen and seniors got to like practice beforehand and like it was, we got to use the football. So we actually knew what was going on a little bit. And it was fun to be able to say like we scored touchdowns in our first ever Powder Puff game. So that was fun. So how long do bragging rights last? Through the rest of the year? Hey, I don't know. All four so soccer year, girls, all, girl, all four <laughs> captains that were seniors on the girls' soccer team scored a touchdown that day. Excellent. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> looked like fun. It was, Next year I'm going it was a lot of fun, especially the cheerleaders at halftime. The boys' football team performed a uh, halftime show uh, how'd they do? dressed as cheerleaders. Did they get hurt? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that we saw. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the Powder Puff game. Any other questions, comments? Really? Great. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good Oh, wait. Uh, um, we're going to be looking for a representative on the screening committee for the new superintendent. So we're going to ask you guys first. We need one representative. So Did you, you guys. Music? I'm sorry? Superintendent. Superintendent. <laughs> search. So oh it would be, uh, you'd be on the search committee. There's probably. I would say maybe four or five meetings. Four or five meetings. Oh. We'll start in January. So you can talk amongst yourselves and, and see and, and uh, let us know. Let, what let times would they be? Uh, the first one is January 21st. And then they're going to kind of coordinate with what's the best for, um, you know, as, as much they can for everybody. Just because I have basketball yeah. and it rotates I'd, late yeah. to early every mm -hmm. Not a commitment. So if you, if, you, if you think you have the time, then you're welcome. If right. not, it's okay to pass along too. Don't feel like I, you have to do everything. Okay? All right. no. It could be somebody else from student council. Yeah, it could be someone else from student council too. But if you want to okay, do yeah. it, Tom. I'll see if I, yeah. if I can. I'm sure I can. Yeah, we definitely want one to find somebody. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving forward, we uh, will come to our first public forum. Seeing nobody, we will move along. Consent Agenda A. Warrants are on the table. Um, call to your attention, there was a warrant to pay for the uh, field trip roof project, yep. and I yep. did authorize that because we only have so many days to give them the check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gave me that authority. So we have uh, warrants for payroll, some payables. Uh, we have use of school facilities. Uh, CPR and AAD training is going on in January. Uh, and we have uh, a series of field trips um, that will be happening as well. Um, and then we have the minutes from November 14th. Um, that is the entire Consent Agenda A. Motion to approve Consent Agenda A. Motion by Ms. Robin. Second. Second by Wendy Greenstein. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, unanimous. Uh, consent agenda B, uh, there are some um, homeschooling requests on here, as well as a uh, request for a school committee waiver. Um, so let's let's deal with the homeschooling first. So let's take these separate. Yeah. Um, <coughs> homeschooling request is by Ms. Patricia Stanley. Motion to approve the homeschooling request. Okay. Made by Ms. Robin. Second. Second by Ms. Vinaco. Any discussion? I'm just wondering, has that been approved program by the superintendent? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? Unanimous. Uh, all right. Now let's go to the um, request for a waiver of school committee policy kindergarten entry date. Uh, you have in your packet uh, the memo from Dr. Davis as well as the actual letter uh, from the parent. Uh, I'm just going to read. You want to read the first? Uh, I can read it. Uh, attaches a request from uh, Michelle uh, Odari for a waiver for school committee policy for kindergarten entry for September 1. Uh, I checked with Ms. Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Desai, and we do not currently have a procedure to assess the readiness of a child for early entry. Uh, as a superintendent, uh, he does not have the authority to waive the school committee policy, thus it is with us right now. Um, so I believe the letter, you have the letter in front of you. Um, she's requesting that her daughter enroll in kindergarten for the 2014-2015, which would be September, school year, uh, but she does not turn five until September 3rd. Our cutoff date is September 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so. Any discussion? Look, I just know we've gone back and forth in six or seven years regarding there's always going to be that cutoff date. And um, 
I think until we have that criteria of what we would expect somebody to have, and my concern there too is you may have a four-year-old passing that readiness screening. So um, it, it's just difficult, and I know in the past, so ever since I've been on the board, we, we have not entertained waiving that because there has to be that cutoff date. And mm -hmm. I just want to clarify something for the school committee. We are required by law and special education to do kindergarten screening, mm -hmm. but that is a special education screening. That's not saying that, you know, where the child is capable of, of going. Uh, in, in a placement. So the, the screening that we do is really a special education screening you know, to see whether or not a child entering you know, should be referred for, for a, a team evaluation and subsequent services. So that screening is really a special education screening, uh, you know, not a kindergarten. Um, we don't have a kindergarten uh, procedure you know, in, ter in terms of looking at the three elements you know, what, what's going on with this child in terms of their cognitive ability, what's going on in terms of their affective or social emotional, and what's going on with their psychomotor. We screen that, but the standard is a special ed standard. Okay. And, and are you familiar with any districts that do have a readiness screening um, for early entry? No, I, 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 um, I don't no. know of any, I don't know, that have a full, mm. you know, I mean, you saw that there was a letter from the current preschools teacher, but again, Having criteria, you know, um, uh, and, and being able to benchmark against it, it's very different than doing kindergarten screening because that's really special education screening. That's looking for children that are actually below the readiness level. That's what gets referred in. And those are screening instruments only. I think, it, I think I just, oh, sorry. Yeah. So we I don't. Just, I mean, I know when we talked, when we moved the date before, um, that I was trying to get it a little later. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, we have parents that want to send their kids to school, so why, who, who are we to say no to them? That's all, I'm, and we're not going to change the date and make four-year-olds go, but if you have a, a parent that feels their child's ready and... Yeah. I would challenge that to just say that it's not the parents saying the child's ready. I think we should let the professionals determine whether the child's ready. But you're not familiar with any, there's not, we have not anything out there that... We have not that. developed a protocol for that, and, and, I, and, I, and that's the cautionary note mm -hmm. that I give you, is that a parent making the determination that they should go because they feel they're ready could be putting that child at a disadvantage of coming in below age, social, emotional issues, uh, as well as, well as uh, cognitive skills, and even the most important is psychomotor skills. Okay. And, and the, it's important to re remember yeah. the question before us is do we want to do we want to uh, waive the policy? I don't think we want to. We can get in discussion about readiness all we want. Our question before us is do we want to waive the policy, which is September one right now? And my feeling is we could go back and forth forever on this. And whether it's ch another discussion we had when we made the change is it two days. Why not do ten days? Why not do? And I think the policy right now is September 1st, and it, since we've never waived that policy, then um, I think I don't think we should start today. Yeah. But yeah, that's something I'd echo. Yeah, we've had. Yeah, what is it? Is it two days? I mean, the date is the date, and it's there for a reason. And as you said, are you familiar with any districts that have any kind of a entrance exam, for lack of a better term? I, I have not researched that, but uh, no. I do not know of any districts that have um, mm -hmm. established. Uh, uh, criteria and, and uh, some type of an assessment. That's why I clarified the, the screening, because screening is not the same as the assessment. Next, I'd just like to take advantage of the fact that we have the elementary principals here. Are you aware of any schools that you've interacted with that have anything like this in place right now? And do they pretty much just have a calendar date and that's that? And that's pretty much hard and fast? Yeah, okay. Do you need a motion? Well, we do need action required, so uh, we do need a motion. Yes. What if motion. we don't have a motion, though? I'm not saying you don't, if you want to make a motion, go ahead. But I'm just saying, if there's a lack of a motion, do we have to do anything? I need to respond to these parents, so you can take no action, and I say this committee took no action on your request. Okay. I'll just I can, open up that possibility. Or so I, if you want to make a motion. Whatever, you, whatever, you, well, whatever your pleasure. I just need to, the action for me is I need to respond to this parent. It was brought to the committee, it was on the agenda, and the committee chose. I make a motion to deny the, um, the authority to waive the school committee policy. Okay. Motion made by Ms. Greenstein. Is there a second?
second. Is there a second? second? Diane. 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 Diane was seconded. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor of denying the uh, waiver of the policy, <coughs> see the way of saying aye. 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 Nays? Nay. Nay? Uh, and abstention? Okay. So uh, it would be two, three, four, five, six to one. Moving forward, uh, report of the superintendent. I'd like to invite um, Carol Brown, the principal of the JFK FM um, elementary schools and uh, the Blackstone Complex, to come forward and also uh, uh, <coughs> I should decide the principal of Millville Elementary. Uh, they are here tonight uh, to talk to you about an update on the literacy. I did put in front of your places uh, a little bit of an outline of comments that they're going to be making. Uh, some of you are aware that, that you did fund uh, a literacy initiative and there are two specific programs that are being initiated at both of the elementary schools. One is the Teacher for Teachers uh, workshop uh, and the other is Foundations. Um, one is uh, directed at K to 2 and the other one is 3 to 5. And uh, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Desai. Thank you for coming. Good evening. Got a little nervous when I walked in and all of you walked out. <laughs> I'm glad you came back. Um, I'll start off with the Teacher for Teacher um, study group and professional development because they were in my building today. And so I can give you an update of how it's going. We did purchase this year, um, along with all the workshops and uh, professional development program, the Fontes and Pinnell benchmark assessment kits for the grades three through five teachers and also the special ed teachers. Um, the workshop facilitators come into our buildings, first of all, for each one of the professional development days. And in addition to that, 12 study groups where they meet with groups of teachers for two and a half hours. And they have conversations. They um, work with teachers to help them learn how to assess fluency and reading comprehension and next steps for instructional interventions. Obviously, the teachers know that they take them to a deeper level and they engage in conversations about what a good reader looks like. So they've had students come in and do some assessments with them and then they do a post discussion with the teachers of what did you see and so it's a hands-on learning experience. Um, when I was in there today, they actually even, the facilitator went with a group of teachers to the classrooms as well and also had discussions about their classroom libraries and so on and so forth. They look at the developmental progression of the reading skills and so it's a dynamic process. It's not that the teachers are just sitting there taking notes. Um, they're actually having conversations back and forth of what did you see, tell me what you think, and, and build from that. Um, the teachers have come to both mm -hmm. Carol and myself about how excited they are about this. They, um, initially they were like, there's a lot of information, which because it's a different style. It's not replacing the curriculum program from Houghton Mifflin, it supplements. Um, and they find this PD and the study groups extremely valuable. So I already had a conversation, I believe, but we would love to have them come back next year. Do you have any other? Yeah, I, I would just like to add that, that the feedback that I think we're both getting from teachers is um, they are so enthused, uh, not only for themselves, but for their students because um, the approach is what, what, what we're trying and what we're aiming for is, is to um, provide similar learning experiences for our students, both at Millville and at the complex, because as we know, they will move up and come together at the middle school. So it's really very important that we have a lot of conversation around that. Um, teachers are just so excited um, and have been wrapping their arms around this professional development. Um, I guess I liken it to, um, a, a new piece of diagnostic equipment in the medical field in a way. It's mm -hmm. not that we haven't been doing these things, but, but we're finding a way to probe deeper. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really beneficial. We're getting to know uh, the students as readers. And, and, and just as importantly, the students are getting to know themselves as readers. Yes. So there's a lot of conversation about what does a good reader do? Um, so as we've been going through classes, we've seen a lot of interaction, not only between the, the students and the teachers, but the students themselves. And the conversations that I've been hearing have been very um, targeted and focused 
on uh, what they're reading. As a matter of fact, I was in a classroom yesterday and a student was, uh, they, they had done a whole group um, lesson on summary and um, did some turn and talk activities and they returned to their seats and I walked up to a, a, a student and I said to her, so, you know, what are you doing? What are you reading? And, and I said, how did you pick the book? And she said, well, we used to go by Lexile levels. <laughs> and now we realize that that may not be the best approach. So then she went on to explain to me about what a good reader does and how you can read, uh, take a book at an independent level where it might not seem that challenging as far as the decoding goes and the fluency, but it's reading for meaning. Um, so it was really nice. It's really nice to have these conversations and, and students be able to really explain what it is they're doing in, in, in great depth. So very pleased, very pleased with how this is going. Um, and do I just want to questions on that oh. that part first, or do you want to go through the whole thing? So what is it very going? exciting. It is. It, it really is. It absolutely is. And then of course we have the foundations program for uh, K through two. And again, teachers are just so excited and enthusiastic about this. Um, it's really a very systematic approach. So as you go from classroom to classroom, when you're looking and observing these lessons, you're hearing the same vocabulary, you're looking at the same approaches. And what has been really um, amazing to me is I walk into a classroom and I see every single student engaged in this. Mm -hmm. And because it's a routine, it's something that they do every day for 30 minutes, um, the students really um, have a deeper understanding of what the expectations are, and regardless of where they are at, there's an opportunity for all to participate. So that's, that's exciting to see. Um, and, and it is a supplementary approach. We're, we're still, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're using our reading curriculum, the Houghton Mifflin program, but as I, I know that I've said previously, we found that the program just didn't address the, the area of phonemic awareness enough. And as the, the students moved throughout the grade levels, we saw that as an area that we really needed to focus upon. Um, it's really a proactive program. Uh, and, it, and it helps to develop the spelling and the reading skills, and it really focuses on those critical skills that all students need to be successful readers. So uh, again, we're seeing this happening in every classroom for 30 minutes, um, and I know you had wanted to share. I had a very dramatic success story with that I was, um, I'd gone in, as you know, we have a program with uh, kindergarten students, and they go in for inclusion into the kindergarten classes, and when I walked in, early October, the teacher in the program was going through the 30-minute lesson as, much, as well as she could, and these little children were squirming, and, and I was sitting there, goodness gracious, she's going through it with due diligence, and the children were not quite ready for it. Last week, I walked into the same classroom, and the teacher was going through the 30-minute routine, and let me tell you, the choral response back, and then she called on each child individually, and each single student nailed it. And so that is a true success story. And you're talking October to December. What tremendous growth. And, it, and credit goes all over because they also go into the inclusion class and then they have the reinforcement again in the program. And so it, it is um, very dramatic, very effective. And the teachers are thrilled because they wanted this type of a structured manner to build a strong foundation. We've had discussions about vertical alignment, and, mm -hmm. and a Houghton Mifflin had elements, but it wasn't what they, um, they needed something supplementary. So this one meets the need for them. That's great. It's, I mean, it's a great example of visible learning, you know, exactly. of seeing that example. Well, help me understand the, um, the um, how does the, um, the teachers, I heard you say the reflective process was great, and mm -hmm. it was great during the facilitators. How does it continue throughout the, throughout the year with just the teachers? How, remind me how that happens. With the 12 study groups you're talking yeah, about with, or the with, foundation? With, with just the teachers in the reflective process about saying this is what, this is what we're doing. And, and is that built in throughout, throughout the rest of the year now that the, the facilitators are not coming back? Oh, they are? They are. It, it, it's different. For the foundations right. program, um, we have four PD days that have been scheduled throughout okay. the year. Um, so, so the consultant will be coming back three more times. What that um, involves is she, she models a lesson and then there's time for the teachers to meet and debrief. So teachers from Millville have come over to the complex. We do it all together. Okay. And then in, in, 
in between those PD sessions, is there any reflective process that happens amongst the teachers that kind of connects the dots between the PD days? Um, absolutely. There, there has been um, a, a lot of discussion about taking a look at um, student need. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as we move through the RTI process and the Tier 2 process, so those students are being identified. And the good news with the Foundations program is we're using that program as well. So there's certainly carryover and consistency. Great. Any other questions, discussion from the committee? Okay. I just want to make a comment. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying what great news. I'm glad to hear yes. both buildings. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together, and the training is there, and the teachers are excited, mm -hmm. and the kids are showing the growth. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out to the committee, because later on the agenda we're going to talk about fiscal 15 budget. The committee made a commitment to this program this year, and it's costing about $60,000. A lot of that was to purchase materials. Next year it will be more the professional development and replacement of some of the consumables, so the cost will be slightly less. But the reality is, in order for this program to be a success, we have to commit to it for a minimum of three years. Mm -hmm. A minimum of three years. And then after that, we have to build in a component to either use our own people to be trainers when, new peop when people come in. Because you are making a commitment uh, to a, an instructional methodology that people need to understand and be able to implement. It is true that these two programs are more widely accepted and, and utilized in, in, in many, many schools. But the reality is it requires constant uh, professional development. I can tell you that I have visited both uh, Blackstone and, the, and Millville Elementary Schools with my principal walkthroughs, and I asked both Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Desai to schedule uh, English language blocks. So I visited four classrooms in each uh, facility, each facility, and I got to see English language arts lessons, and it's really fascinating to watch the work that's being done in kindergarten at Blackstone, and then go over and see a kindergarten class at Millville. And it's not it's not that they're doing the exact same thing, but the methodology and the instructional is there in much the same way as we kind of go up. I saw a, a first grade class at uh, Millville, and when kids can identify a, a, a diphthong and talk about it, of what it is, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's an understanding of of, of our language. In, ter in terms of phonemic awareness and those sounds, how critical, to, how critical that is uh, to acquiring l uh, 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 reading skills, and then being able to differentiate the, differentiate the con consonants and the vowels and what make them different. When we saw our kindergarten class at, um, at Blackstone, it was absolutely fascinating to do it. So I commend the principals for leading this effort because, again, without a curriculum person, I had to turn to them in August and say, if we're going to do this, you're going to have to provide the leadership. So they took this on, even though it was a project that was, uh, you know, uh, going to be designated for the assistant superintendent. When that position did not materialize, both Asher and Carol stepped up, as did their teachers, to make it work. And uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm quite proud of the work that they've been doing and continue to do on this effort. So thank you. Uh, I just want to ask one question sure. on what you just said. Is there a formal train the trainer? Uh, component to eventually this? is that something we have to add in in, in future yeah. years to year four. Year Ev four eventually the these these companies offer continued support you would need less of it but you would also have the ability to have mentors mm -hmm. so you wouldn't need the consultant coming back four times a year yeah. but you might have that consultant come in and do a refresher in August or, the, or at the start of the school year but we could pair the teacher up with somebody else at their grade level Okay. And they could go and see. So eventually it could be self-sustaining. The, the cost would go down, Expense. yes. Expense. Right. Mm -hmm. And the name of that program, was it, it sounded like the Wilson when he was yeah, teaching, it is. but it was, is it the Wilson? Yeah, it's Foundations. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to say thank you. I know, I know it's been a lot of extra work for both of you, and it's obviously paying off just from, you know, the, the comments you brought to us tonight. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. And happy holidays. Yeah, thank you. That's a nice segue into the next item. Uh, I have um, uh, just hired a person to come in and work part time to help me with curriculum. Uh, Karen McGuire uh, recently retired as the middle school principal in Uxbridge. I previously knew Karen when I was the interim superintendent in Ashland, when she was the middle school principal there. 
and uh, she's agreed to come on and work Tuesday and Wednesday, and she is in, in this week uh, to get oriented, and she will be primarily working on curriculum instruction assessment uh, with the principals on the curriculum issue, uh, helping to facilitate some of the instructional uh, uh, professional development uh, at the different uh, levels, and, and also working with the data teams uh, as, as, as part of our um, curriculum work. And I'm pleased to have her. She lives right in Uxbridge, and it it's going to work out. She, it's a strict per diem contract, no benefits. She comes in and, and, and works two days a week, and I'm, I'm pleased to have her. Uh, I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever find somebody who would come to work. Is two days a week enough? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because at this point, you know, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Desai have really taken over this other project, and at this point, you know, it, it would not. It, I'm, I'm pleased with the way that's going. At, at this point, and uh, uh, the other piece, remember, is Brad Monroe is actually doing some of the other other work uh, with, with the grants, so his position, you know, is backfilling some of that as well. But he's been with me since August, so between the two of them, I'm, I'm feeling I've got I've got most everything covered at this Can point. You get down to four days a week. I'm sorry. Are you going to get down to four days? A week? Uh, I don't think so because no. now we're doing budget. No. That's true. <laughs> you know. So yes, I am still working five days a week. Other than those weeks when I have uh, contractual uh, uh, coaching responsibilities that I signed up before I came here. So for the most part, I work five days a week at this point. Okay. Uh, the next item is a quick update on the roof projects. Um, the uh, the um, uh, complex is about 75% uh, completed. It probably, um, um, depending again on the weather, we will not make the December. 17th, which was the date for substantial completion. There is provision in the contract for uh, acknowledgement of bad weather days. And I, I, at our project meeting on Monday, uh, the uh, Greenwood industry is going to submit a request for extension. Uh, it's just uh, we've had some cold, we've had some rain, we've had some snow, and people can't work on the roof under those conditions. But we are, at this point, about 80%. If you buy the building, they're not tying it up with the with the uh, uh, trim because they can do that in cold weather. So the the focus is on rip and putting down the roof, getting the insulation on, getting the uh, the roof material on, and then they can come back and do the uh, trim work. Uh, that is not as weather dependent as it is on that. So uh, at this point, weather forecast for the weekend is not good. So they're probably going to lose the weekend and the following week. Uh, they they uh, would be working if the weather is good Monday, Friday, and, uh, Thursday, and Friday. They would not be working. When you talk about an extension, is that so many days? Yes. Or, so what does that look Don't like? Don't know. I haven't before? seen the request, but okay. it would be it would my in my experience it would be it would probably come in as a 14-day request, okay. right? 14-day request, two weeks. Um, I have to say that the com the company has tried to, you know, um, step it up. Um, and they did have a good work plan, but it only takes a, a couple of days. I think uh, the project manager at this point, you know, they've lost they've lost close to uh, 14 days due to weather, uh, and um, they've tried to make it up. But there's only so much they can do because we're underneath, and there's only so much space we can give them uh, to to do that. The addition, the other thing that we did at the uh, middle school is that we did bring in. Uh, uh, an industrial hygienist from a company to kind of go through and look. Questions were raised about odors and, and uh, some concerns. Uh, and, you know, we finally did, you know, have a company come in. It's tie and bond. We use them for our asbestos. They're familiar with our building. Uh, and, you know, they, you know, cleared that you know, there was no uh, items that were toxic in any way. All the materials are non toxic. Um, and he did make a lot of suggestions. Uh, about, you know, how to um, not open windows. You know, when you smell something, you open a window. The problem is the way that building is shaped, it comes down and it wraps in. He said, don't open the windows. You know, it only, it only, because the smell is originating at the top of the roof, the wind blows in, blows down, and it wraps. Who knew? Uh, but he, he was very helpful in giving some suggestions, and those were passed on to Carol and the teachers. Are we finding that the smells are depleting yes. in the first now the cold phase. weather yeah 
No, yeah. I'm asking the first phases, the first wing. Yeah, the first wing. There, mm -hmm. so we can we, they that. modified, they modified the the protocol for for uh, dealing with it in other subsequent wings. But as the industrial hygienist pointed out, that was the wing with the steepest pitch, um, and we probably didn't hurt ourselves by opening the windows, thinking we were airing the building out. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, in in terms of that, but uh, so we, we've. We've had that inspection. The Millville, uh, the, the high school uh, project, um, we are proceeding now uh, with the developing of the construction documents with both our OPM and our design architect. Uh, um, and, you know, they're now uh, going forward, and we hope to be on a schedule uh, to be able to go out to bid on that project sometime in spring. Uh, again, the biggest thing people need to understand. This process is regulated by MSBA, so what that means for us is once Murray Wolf, the architect designer, gets his plan done, once Arcadis, the, uh, uh, the uh, project management company, uh, gets it, we have to then turn it over to a commissioning agent, which is em employed by MSBA, and they have to review all of that documentation. Uh, and so that is a process that we have some control over, but we also have a piece that we don't control. In reality, you would not do the roof in the winter. So the, the time frame that we're on. The one thing we did have to do is request a year extension because when we started that roof project, uh, MSBA originally expected that roof, roof to be done by the close of this calendar year. So we did have to write a letter to MSBA specifying the reason why the project couldn't move forward, which was principally around the funding issue that we had to get clarified and, uh, and uh, submitted that documentation to MSBA and received verbal acknowledgement that we would be able to extend uh, into 2014 uh, to, move, to move forward with that. All right. How is it right now, Perry? Has there been any issues? We have not had any significant water penetration at the high school. Um, you know, we did have some heavy, heavy rain there. Right. Uh, we, have a, we have a couple of typical spots, but the custodians, you know, <coughs> deal with that. But we have not had any major uh, uh, water penetration uh, on that, on that roof. All right. Uh, that roof is going to be a very different roof in terms of what's up there and multi-story building than, than the Blackstone roof. All right. Um, the Millville Elementary, um, the the uh, design team. And the OPM um, had a meeting uh, with uh, Mr. Gould and I to kind of review uh, the uh, submittal. And our project was submitted uh, by the December 5th deadline to MSBA, which means it goes to the G uh, January board of MSBA for approval. The cost estimate at this point is uh, $1,530,517. There was one issue that we asked for clarification from the MSBA. Over the auditorium area, there are actually some air conditioning units that long ago ceased to function uh, as air conditioning units. Uh, MSBA will not pay to replace them. They do not consider that a roof piece. They will pay. They will pay for the roofing and the upgrades around it. So the thinking at this point is that given this dollar amount, given this dollar amount, if MSBA approves that dollar amount, we could go out to bid and put in replacing those AC units as what's called a bid alternate. The only piece to that would be to, when the project were fund, was paid by MSBA, they would not pay for that piece, but invariably the cost of a couple of AC units, because they're not big, is probably under $5,000 to do it. So. If they approve this number and we go out to bid, we will more than likely put in a bid alternate to actually replace those units. Do but they not work right now? Correct, they do not. They do not. So they're going without, or have they been replaced with something else? Nothing. Th these are air conditioning units, not right. ventilation. Right. It was AC in that auditorium at one time. The, the units are on the roof and they don't work. And they've never been replaced. This would be the opportunity to replace exactly. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to replace. yeah, they they can't be fixed. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. To fix the issue of no air conditioning. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you know that's that's the thinking. Yeah. You know. Um, that would be an 
but under the circumstances, yeah, it's it would, to do it. You're be, up there doing something. You might right. as well do it. Yeah, they're going to cover the labor. They would cover the labor to remove them, and at this point, they're going to do all of the appropriate roofing around them. The units themselves, that's the smallest cost uh, because these are not big units up there. So the, obviously when MSBA said they would not pay for them, they would not reimburse for them, uh, the, the thinking is that we will put them in as a, as a, uh, a bid alternate uh, to do it, clearly do it. Attached was kind of a breakdown of the, of the budget. Uh, all of this follows the MSBA guidelines uh, in terms of, you know, what they will allow for square footage. The, the Blackstone Elementary roof is actually going to be replaced with the same type of roof, the asphalt shingle roof. You can't put one of these composite roofs on there because of the way it was designed. So it will be replaced with asphalt shingles, which is actually the, one of the cheapest uh, roof replacements. But there is a square footage cost allowance that they would provide. So, Mil I'm sorry, Millville, yes. Forgive me, I juggle three of them in my head. All right, but the uh, this cost estimate that was submitted uh, is consistent with the with the MSBA guidelines. So we should hear probably by the end of January that the project's been approved. That will then trigger the notification by the regional district to the town of Millville that we are going to do a borrowing for that project. And the way the election is before town meeting that will necessitate a response from Millville uh, on, on moving the project forward. Right? They have 60 days. They have 60 days once we take our vote, and we would take our vote, you know, contingent on, you know, talking with the people in uh, the town officials in, in Millville, how they want to structure those postings for a town meeting and then the election. Because the election is in April, I'm told, mm -hmm. and town meeting is in May. So it actually needs something before the before that, so that they can put on the ballot, uh, which I, you know, again, that's the communication with the uh, selectmen to do some kind of a capital funding override, right? So, Mr. Gould, uh, as soon as we hear from MSBA, we will lay out the thing. We will have a conversation with the uh, town clerk uh, to be clear on what the dates are and what the wording is, and we will make sure that that is. Uh, included and literally I will walk it over and and go through it I don't want to repeat of what happened with the other project in terms of funding okay so that's where we stand at, at this point uh, in, in terms of uh, roofing projects any questions the next one is um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts we have a chapter 71 section 370 which is the anti-bullying law and last year, the legislature made some changes uh, to the current anti-bullying law, expanding it. Principally, what is expanded is in, uh, which changed the definition of perpetrator to include a member of the school staff, including but not limited to an educator, administrator, school nurse, cafeteria worker, custodian, bus driver, athletic coach, advisor, or extracurricular activity or paraprofessionals. So what I've done for you here is we have basically, um, Bridget Walsh has put in in the dark, highlighted where we need to add language to our current process. Oh, so that's not the added language? That, that is the added language. That is the added okay. language. What's, what's in your packet, you know, this came uh, from guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, to put in here, and essentially what it's doing is, ex is expanding the definition, all right? Uh, given that this is your current anti-bullying process. I bring it before you this evening really for discussion uh, and then what I would do is post it up on the web and I would send notice out that if parents want to, uh, community people want to make comments about it um, and then bring it back to you in January for a vote. Mm -hmm. But we are required by law to have, have these changes which is the expansion. The anti-bullying law as it was originally conceived was student on student anti-bullying. Now that definition has been expanded to include everybody else that works in the school. All right, uh, everybody else that works in the school. All right, so it's been, uh, you know, put in there. Um, the um, 
the uh, we've tried to integrate it into the policy that that was in place here, which was a little awkward in some spots because our our um, the anti-bullying uh, procedure that you adopted the last time well doesn't doesn't quite parallel you know some of the some of the things, but for the purposes of this, the other part of the law that we have to do is that I then have to get this out to the people that were on the last committee or the people that were in that representative group, there'll be different people, to review it. Because every, the law requires every two years you have a review of your anti-bullying policy and we're up for that. So if you were on it before, you can't be on it again? Oh, no, you can be. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, we have some. We have some people on the original committee that don't work here anymore, so that's what I mean. You know, um, I, I, mean, would, I don't think you need that many. No, I mean, there was a lot we, on that. that no, plan. it was the first one. So, right. you know. No, I just questioned the bullying. Um, isn't it slash harassment as well? Does the harassment yes. piece cover? I mean, the staff and then this and that, because I know the the bullying is one piece, but harassment is a separate separate one. Would the verbiage in that change as well, as far as staff and anybody that works in the school? Because I get the bullying piece, but harassment's usually right there with the bullying. So you're correct in that there are a couple of laws that overlap here, right? right? Um, this one is this one is the uh, bullying. Um, you know, is is around the bullying, but yes, there's an overlap. We have an anti-hazing law in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. which is very specific. And then, you know, there are harassment issues, and then there's anti-bullying. But will the new verbiage or the thing apply to the harassment? Because someone the, harassment the, is even worse than is, bullying. Is, if you harassment really doesn't, harassment doesn't, um, um, doesn't distinguish, doesn't exclude anybody. The okay. original anti-bullying law excluded the staff, teachers. Yeah, well, okay. so, so now they're just, just correcting inclusive. that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. right. Uh, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, reach out to uh, documents that the department has put up on their website mm -hmm. and you know I know that M Mr. Chaplin and I we both attended workshops at the at the uh, MA MASC MAS convention you know about changes that you have to make in this I think I sent that to everybody the, yeah. the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know we're trying we're trying to do it without necessarily invoking legal counsel you know to do it um, and, and just you know get it done it has to get done uh, you know in a, in a sense were the concerns brought up in those sessions you were in about how to manage? You know, it's different when you're talking student to student than it is talking about staff, talking about coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bigger Correct. application. The law really just dictates how schools should respond. They try to define it, okay, as best they can, but it's really the law is really about how a school responds. You triage, you A, B, C, D, and you just follow it. That's really what the law says. Um, now that it, it, is it going to be a little more complicated? Yeah, because when it originally came out, uh, if I looked at Wendy the wrong way, that and I, we were students, everyone was saying bully was the buzzword. And it took a good 18 months to kind of get that to calm down. I think there's going to be probably a swell, and then then it'll die die down down again. But the, really, the law only says this is how you are supposed to respond. They want because the problem was schools were responding. Ten different ways. So this kind of uniformed it and said, but you have to respond this way. You have to inform parents. You have to, you know, go through these specific steps, and it's all in there. Um, so I, I think those things are going to pop up. Yeah, I think it brings it to a higher level of uh, legal ramification <coughs> issues that, that could occur as well. That's, you know, right. Bullying, you have to remember, is not a one-time <coughs> event. A <coughs> child, or even now in this case, a school staff member. <coughs> Saying something once to a student does not constitute bullying. It may not be appropriate, and that's something the principal should deal with, but it doesn't, it, it's a pattern of behavior. So essentially, the lawyers say once is not, but it's a concern. Twice is now concern. Three, you've got a pattern <coughs> of doing that. So, you know, the assistant principals and the principals really have to uh, analyze. And, and a parent or a student can make a claim, and you have to analyze it relative to, you know, who said what to whom, and how often has it occurred? Has it occurred once? You know, you handle it one way. If it's occurred twice, <coughs> you have to acknowledge it and document it. If it's occurred three times, with hopefully some intervention at, at, at the first and second, you now have a, a pattern of bullying. 
And there's, but again, there's, there's the intention, courts have, intent, yes. and power differences in, that we've in there. Those are really the three big filters, yeah. you right. know, that the investigation has to look at. Yeah. But it doesn't really change probably what's occurring anyway, because you'd still have those concerns as you describe a pattern. You're still yeah. going to have intervention of some sort. This formalizes that. Correct. And also, th this law change now incorporates all of the other the staff. You know, because it doesn't include the school committee. Though. <laughs> Your policy could, could you could make a motion to expand it. <laughs> okay. That a couple, that's a big umbrella. Correct. Yeah. All right. So my recommendation is that I post this on the uh, website and invite parents or community people as well as our own staff to make comments about it uh, and kind of open that up and work on it and at your January meeting bring it back uh, to see if we've got it we've got it covered. Um, do we need to do uh, a little more outreach than just popping it on the website? I'm open to any suggestions. It's I, I'm just thinking maybe just an article in the Enlightener saying it's up there. Please go to the website. Yeah, I mean, I have, the, I have the ability to do an email blast mm -hmm. to all parents. It's probably that. The Enlightener isn't going to come out until, yeah. you know, January. Is Something. Not gonna, yeah. Yeah. More than yeah, just because yeah. if you don't if you don't happen on it on the website. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I have the capability. I think an email blast, an Facebook, email social and, media. Okay, um, good. I'll... Um, I'll be meeting with the leadership team next Tuesday. I will ask them to put it in their uh, newsletters uh, at the beginning of January. And, and if we're not ready in January, I'll, I'll defer to uh, February. All right. And it doesn't mean we can't revisit it at any time. But we do have a legal requirement to get this up in place. All right. all going well and comments received, we might be able to vote on it in January? Yes. Okay. The do we tip, have to do I think a couple the sooner of the better. on it? Well, that's why I'm suggesting tonight is really like a first yes, reading, uh, and and your, your January will be your opportunity, if it's ready, to vote on it. So, do you need a motion to waive the first reading? Uh, we didn't read it out loud. I don't know how you handle that. I don't. Do I would out loud the whole policy. I, well, no. I think that's what we always motion to waive it so yes. we wouldn't read it out yeah. loud it's, it's on the website if anybody wants to read it yeah um, plus we read through just the change as you highlighted the changes yeah. for us so that was i listed it on the agenda as a discussion item um however you'd like you know to make it make a motion to move it forward it's fine i don't know the proper procedure <laughs> go ahead i'm kind of leaving can, it is that what we need to do right. of go ahead, documents. Uh, make then a make motion it. to waive the first reading second Okay. Motion by Mr. Fox, second by Mrs. Robin to waive the first reading of the bullying policy. The bullying policy. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. Unanimous. Okay. The next item on the agenda, I, I called this to your attention, I believe, last month, but uh, we did receive word that an energy project that was submitted on our behalf uh, by North Northern Energy Systems to National. Uh, and then remember NSTAR, National, who's your electric? NSTAR, NSTAR. And uh, in the packet, National Grid. Grid. National Grid, I'm sorry. Uh, the project is to upgrade at the middle school, you know, principally in some of the heating and ventilating controls. Uh, the project has an installation price of $73,072. National Grid will pay uh, the contract of $36,536. We, in effect, are paying half of the cost to do it. The payback is 1.3 years. Uh, you don't get many, many energy projects that have that kind of a payback uh, period. So I have signed off, and uh, I spoke with the, uh, Mr. Robinson at the Northern Energy Services. Uh, they're backlogged right now, uh, so the next step will probably be sometime in late January. The contractor will come, and we can work out a plan uh, to do it. Much of the work that they're proposing is going to take place on the roof, which automatically tells me that probably shouldn't happen until March or April uh, to do that. Um, and the, the way in which we will pay for this is that National Grid will allow us an interest-free loan on the, on the project, and that is negotiated on our bill. But I will tell you that this would be a project that I would monitor very closely, and at the end of the year, if you have money in your facilities account, the <coughs> rental uh, money that we get, we should pay this off and, and get rid of it because then we can have the full benefit next year of these projected savings. The savings are both in the uh, kilowatt hours, the electrical cost, because they'll, re re they'll be replacing some motors and ventilators, and also in the uh, number of gallons of oil that we would need. 
uh, to do that. So there are two, two points of savings uh, for this. So I think it's a, uh, a good arrangement. This project also very unique in the state of Massachusetts. Chapter 149, which is the public construction law in Massachusetts, is waived <coughs> for these energy projects. So Mr. Gould reviewed it, and, in, and indeed, this is a project that we do not have to go out to bid for because the, the law clearly gives us that authority as a, as a municipality to accept it. And because it's through a, uh, uh, an electrical uh, a public utility, we do not have to go out to bid for it. So the prices are here. These are all set. And, uh, and it would, we'd be running it in conjunction with, with National Grid. So we don't have to go out to bid for it. Want to state yes. this no relationship whatsoever with oh. Donald <laughs> Robinson? Not you. Is there no any right guarantee on the ROI? <laughs> Again, you know, it's all subject to, you know, uh, rates for you know KWH and also the the other variable. The other variable is you know a mild winter, but on average they're estimating 6,000 gallons of fuel. The fuel has gone up every year in the last three years, so it could be. But 1.3 isn't. It's a great, oh, it is. it's great. You, you know, 10 years out, it probably would not have been break worth break doing. Break even. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Okay. All right. The next item, um, I had in, spoken to this committee before about uh, using uh, NESDEC um, to do an enrollment study. So I included in your packet their enrollment study. I know I did receive inquiries from Aaron and Wendy about looking more deeply at Millville, yeah, separate. Um, and I have some data. Um, uh, I think that's the next step uh, to look at that. Um, the, dilemma, the dilemma is that NESDEC has not done an enrollment study for this district since 1997. So we have not been submitting data to them, you know, since 1997. Any enrollment study is really based on the ability to track your data. So we had to go back and construct some of this data. Some of what we had because of October 1 reports, some of it we didn't have and, and, and in order to do the projection. So uh, Dr. Kennedy, uh, Don Kennedy, who works for NESDEC that does these uh, projections, you know, certainly feels comfortable, you know, with these projections, but however, he's got to put some caveats on it you know, that, that uh, we're, we're giving him uh, reconstructed information mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of looking at it. However, there are a couple of trends that, that the committee really needs to be aware of, that, that we're showing a flat number of births in both communities. And what that means, you know, is that, that the decline has occurred. It takes five years to grow a kindergarten child, and so as a result, you know, these projections, you know, are down, you know, based on birth data. Birth data is something that we get every year from the town clerks because the towns are required to do census uh, uh, counts. And so that's a, a real number. The other variable on kindergarten is that kindergarten is not a required entry grade. That is, parents only have to start enrolling their children in school upon their sixth birthday. So kindergarten for some parents, they opt not to send their child, even though they might meet the September 1 deadline, they may opt to hold out. So even though they may chronologically be age appropriate, some, some children don't come. But if you looked at the chart, in, in the data that we were able to construct, there's a line, you're actually very good. <laughs> People send their kids to kindergarten. Mm. And I would tell you that um, because you have full day K, that's one of the variables. We, we know, or at least according to Dr. Kennedy, when in fact you incorporate full day kindergarten, you tend to get a higher enrollment uh, from parents in, in kinder, for kindergarten, all right, for kindergarten. So those numbers are kind of tracking births to enrollment. Now what's happening at both schools right now is that they are uh, collecting the data and they will be going out in January uh, to the, to, the children, to the families of children that are age appropriate according to the census and trying to establish what's the cohort coming in. All right, we have a number and that number particularly in, in, in Millville is low, about 21, 22 students. 
all right, 21, 22 students. It's, it's, it's proving, you know, in, in, in Blackstone, uh, you know, to be a, a pretty consistent number uh, in, in, in Blackstone. But Millville, as you know, this year, the, the Millville Elementary uh, Kindergarten this year. 24. Uh, 26 plus 4. Right. We have, we have some kids coming in from the preschool. We really can't count them as kindergarten students. And out of that 24, there were a couple of retentions. So actually new kids coming in, I think, was 22. And then we had two retentions, all right? And again, that's a variable uh, that you have to look at as well. It's interesting to look at that sheet that you had sent yeah. with the Millville because it says, you know, for, from 2006 to 2007 all the way up to 2012, you're in the 40 range. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get to 2013, you're at 24, and yeah. then the projected is uh, definitely concerned. And yeah. Blackstone, you're in the 100 range, yeah. except for the years 2010 to 2012. So it is interesting to be able to break that down and yeah. take a look at where we're headed. Yeah. Um, um, how do they factor in like developments? I know from Thea Street to Chestnut Hill Road, there was those noble heights that they had talked from back and forth when I was on the planning board, and that was a huge development that right. if it did span or ever went, and I'm probably not in the next few years in the economy, not getting yeah. that much better. But I mean, that would be a huge, and I, but Blackstone has a lot of land as well. Right. It, the, it, when, when Dr. Kennedy, uh, on the last page, mm -hmm. he's got the chart of what are the building permits issued? These are the building permits that were actually issued in these years. The, the, dilemma, the dilemma is that you can go back, a permit can be issued, mm -hmm. and the builder has many years to act on it. So there may be a permit that was issued 10 years ago right. that's just now being pulled to build on it. But if you look, starting in 2005, you know, they were at 22 in Blackstone and 13 in Millville. And then, in, you know, then when we look back five years, they're all under 10. And in one year, there was no building permit mm -hmm. in, in Millville. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that houses weren't built, but there might have been a permit pulled 10 right. years earlier right. that's just getting there. So, you know, uh, and, and the source of this is HUD because the building departments are required every year to send their building permit information into HUD. But when I called him about that, but he said, you're right, there could be a building permit that was issued 10 years ago mm -hmm. that a builder now is going to act on, all right? Mm -hmm. Because that Elm Street mm -hmm. uh, project. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and there's one pending in Millville, too. Right. Two on my street. Yeah. Uh, this year. Carriage this estates. Year. Yeah. But. So the real question is, you know, what's active mm -hmm. as a building permit? The difficulty with that is generally if somebody's going to build, they're usually going to get that house up within a six to nine month period. So there's not a whole lot of lead time to tell you that's going to happen, as opposed to when the, when the building's boom was in. You know, builders would come in and say, okay, we're pulling a permit for, you know, 50 or 60 homes, and we right. plan to build 25, 20, and, a, and you had a plan. You could see it. The, it's different. Because even, in, even on Elm Street um, uh, project, you know, they're doing all the, uh, the uh, uh, infrastructure, um, but I'm sure that they're not going to build all of the houses at once. They're probably going to start building, build, sell, build, sell, build, sell, and it's going to take multiple years for a build out mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of that. And but that's also what they did with the one on Park Street. Yeah. It's build, right. sell, build, sell. So yes. Oh, yeah. Developing. Oh, even so right. Didn't stay so at, at this point, what, you know, I've just got some cautionary notes, you know, in terms of, you know, what are we, what are we looking at? Uh, we have gone back uh, and pulled out. Uh, some of the, the kindergarten data uh, more historically. Uh, I'd like to, you know, share that information with NESDEC and Dr. Kennedy, uh, you know, to see what's going on. But I think the true variable for us going forward is going to be what the principals tell me in, in mid to late January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's their outreach on the current census mm -hmm. to do it? The birth data, you know, because that's, again, some, somewhat uh, uh, reliable data. Uh, because that comes right off off of the census, is is really to be kind of looking at what's happening, you know, in terms of, of the births, you know, and that's staying in that 130 to 135 range, right? And uh, what they're estimating. But the cohorts, the cohorts are definitely, uh, definitely uh, going down, particularly in Millville. Right? And that's an anomaly, you know, it could pop up. Mm -hmm. 
we have a small uh, first uh, kindergarten if it's going to move forward and then we're, it looks like we're going to have a small entering kindergarten and we have three sections of fifth grade and we don't need three sections next year we have two fourths so it is, is it is something that we're going to look at i talked to varsha uh, Desai, and i will go to a faculty meeting at, at millville elementary in january to share the data and so that everybody knows what we deal what we're dealing with mm -hmm. right but my recommendations are clearly you need you need as a committee to commit to doing this enrollment study every year only because that's the way your data is going to become more reliable uh, in terms of it. I also think you do need to establish some kind of a study group to address enrollment trends. I know that that uh, Wendy and Aaron, you know, we've been we've been having that discussion uh, around enrollment as well as the um, the regional agreement. So I, I do think it would be prudent uh, to um, to establish something, uh, some commit study group uh, to look at it, which I would recommend. Would be members of the committee, the faculty, administrators, and perhaps some community people to kind of talk about it. All right. Smaller cohorts are much more volatile. Um, I told you my twin story. Don't ask about twins because you could get three families moving with twins, and you get six kids, and it's like you've had an explosion in in your enrollment uh, as a, as an anomaly. Uh, the other the other tweaky variable to this is the school choice. Um, there's been a there's been a little bit more volatility in uh, in uh, some of our neighboring communities, uh, but most of that is not occurring at the early uh, grades. We're pick, we're picking some children up in the elementary, but we're picking up more at middle and high school with school choice. That's another variable. Right. Is there any uh, feedback on the uh, charter school in Franklin expanding? I sent a letter um, concerning you know our, our raising the issue of expanding their. Um, their uh, base um, and uh, I have not received a response to my letter the Board of Education is meeting the next uh, week I believe on the 17th next Tuesday uh, and uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen their agenda you know to do it <coughs> yeah, I don't know this is the, the Benjamin it's not a, it's an existing charter school mm -hmm. but but I, I'm told they're relocating from the uh, <coughs> St. Mary's parochial school, and the real question is they don't know where they're going yet. And that would, uh, to me, that would be a bigger mitigating factor. If they leave, if they leave Franklin and they relocate somebody else, someplace else, mm -hmm. um, I've not. Neither neither Blackstone or Millville really have any, um, what I would say, are school properties, uh, compatible properties. But I don't know where they're going mm -hmm. at this point. Have you, has anybody else? I mean, I haven't seen any local. I don't. Uh, I don't get a local paper, so I don't know. I haven't heard anything either. Yeah, at this point, but I have not heard. I can, have not heard from them. Okay. okay. Any questions on this enrollment? Was this helpful? Because the the last trend, regardless what 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 Dr. Kennedy is pointing out, is that you are looking at a lower uh, uh, overall enrollment, uh, which has started now and it will extend into 2023. Of, of a loss of over 200 students, K-12, K-12, unless there's some kind of a resurgence in the building. We're entering into a stable period mm -hmm. um, of that, mitigated by school choice uh, as, as a variable, and then the other variable is at the uh, high school level with uh, Blackstone Valley Tech. You're going to have a lower cohort of freshmen uh, coming up, not in the not in the immediate term, but certainly in the next, you know, five to seven years, you're going to have a fewer number of eighth graders. And if they, you know, continue to take 30 to 40 kids at Blackstone Valley Tech, it would have an impact on the high school. But it's hard it's hard to predict that off of these enro enrollment data uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Okay. I will talk to Dr. Kennedy tomorrow and get him that data, and hopefully he can get something back to me. And if I get it for the January meeting, I'll bring it back. All right. Now, how do we do this every year? Will that just be so? My recommendation in the budget is that you you maintain your membership in Nesdec, and it's one of the services you get for your membership. Okay. They offer you. Uh, the you just have to ask. Right. Yeah. It's available. <laughs> they send you the forms. You got to fill them out, get them back to them, and do it. Is there a month? Is there a it's, month? It's, 
It's based around the October 1 enrollment. Okay. So after so, October 1. Yeah. You know, so they collect the data after the October 1 enrollments, which is the, the date that the Department of Education uses for all uh, uh, enrollment uh, in terms of that. And, and one point here, when we talk about losing students as we transition to the next topic, that's what causes us to have less Chapter 78 because Chapter 78 is based on students. So the more students you have enrolled, your Chapter 78 goes up. If you lose enrollment, your Chapter 78 goes down. So the fluctuation of five to ten students, you know, isn't dramatic. You lose probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars, but you start talking about losing a hundred students, you you not, you're now talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. You to look at how to bring them in to do that. All right. So it's it's one of the it's one of the variables. <laughs> And, we, you know, we just did add a variable of the before and after school program. So looking at that data as we go along, you know, uh, that's a variable. I'm not saying it's going to be the answer, uh, but it's clearly, you know, a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next item is the preliminary information on the budget. And I want to be very clear. What I've given you in your packet tonight is not a budget. It's preliminary information to start the discussion of building the fiscal 15 budget because I want you to see the format of how I can build this budget using the program that we have called Budget Sense and how this is constructed and how some of the comments are in there. I've met with the principals and, and uh, with Dr. Hahi to talk about you know, some of the changes. What's in here right now, all right, if I can jump to that. Um, is looking at and the variables I've, got, I've rated here revenue assumptions you know at this point we won't know about chapter 70 until end of January all right we've heard limited transfer from E&D you don't have money to transfer the federal grants particularly our title one and our special ed I was very very concerned about the federal government with this sequestration that it could mean about a 10 percent if you read the papers both the Senate and the House uh, uh, chairs of the respective finance committees, the Ways and Means as it's called, have agreed on a compromise to move the federal budget. And out of that, um, there, will, there will not be the impact of sequestration. What that means is there will be no additional cuts, but the cuts that have already occurred will end up getting level funded. So we're not going back to the level of funding that we got two years ago, but we're not looking at another 10 percent reduction. And that's good news because that, that would have been a real concern of looking at some of our, our, uh, our, our uh, uh, grants, particularly our special education money. Uh, special education circuit breaker is another budget issue in the state budget that we have to be concerned about. The next item in, in meeting with the principals in talking about their personnel, personnel needs, we got to address this impact issue of the impact of lower enrollment numbers at Millville Elementary. Mm -hmm. as we build this budget. I have not, in the preliminary budget, adjusted for anybody. All the people that are currently in positions are still in that preliminary numbers. I've not subtracted anybody. The only thing I've done on personnel is, is in fact, people that we know are retiring, they're leaving in June, I have factored them out and I've got a replacement in there at a master's step four. So there's some savings because people are generally senior people when they retire and we're projecting a replacement at a master's force uh, salary, okay? But I've not taken anybody out. Um, the uh, the uh, data that we have right now on English language learners is we've got a growing population and we may have to, may have to hire additional teacher to work with our English language learners, all right? Uh, it's popping up particularly uh, from the, uh, from the uh, elementary level, uh, we have a couple of students at the high school. That presents a little bit more of a, of a problem uh, to deploy the staff that we have. Uh, the elementary, it's a little easier. Uh, high school, it's more difficult. At the high school level, uh, there's real concern on the part of Mr. Dudak for the numbers in, in world languages. Currently, we have two teachers that uh, teach world languages that are actually teaching a sixth class, mm -hmm. and they get compensated for that. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, we could uh, 
uh, look at the numbers, but the, the numbers in world languages are in the high 20s, and we've also been restricted in how many sections we can offer of some of the advanced uh, language courses. That's a concern. We have currently a vacant position in, this high, in the high school for an information media librarian. We're going into to NEASC. It's a concern that I have because we have no professional information media librarian in the entire district. At the elementary, the middle, and high school, we don't. Uh, and, and I think it's an area we have to have conversation about. I'm not suggesting we need a full-time person at the high school, but I do think as a district, you know, there's a tremendous need for support for students and teachers around us. Um, when I was at Blackstone Valley Tech, they've imp implemented a different model. I don't know if, King Philip, you've got a different model. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's something we have to look at uh, in, in terms of that. Um, the other position that in conversation with Mr. Dudak and conversation with Mr. Silva, who's our new athletic director, the demands on the, on the athletic director's position, we currently have somebody that works they teach four classes in phys ed, and they, they teach one less class and get a stipend to be the athletic director. Athletics is becoming a very demanding uh, position in terms of supervision of coaches. We have to make sure that coaches are trained by, M by the MIA standards. We have to make sure that they're evaluated properly. Uh, we, have to, we have to ensure that they understand the anti-hazing uh, law in Massachusetts, the anti-bullying law in Massachusetts, as well as the coordination of, of multiple teams and multiple seasons. Uh, this model is not a good model. It, it puts us in a very limited uh, way uh, in, in, in terms of our athletic supervision. It's something we have to talk about uh, in, in terms of this current model of uh, having somebody at the high school teach for one off. It's like a department head. But athletics is not a department. It runs, as you know, it's somebody who have children. <laughs> it's afternoons, it's Saturdays, it's nights. It's a lot. And if you're here teaching, you can't say, oh, if you're out tonight until 10 o'clock supervising games, come in later. You can't. You have a 735 class to teach. So it's something, some conversation. The additional item that's not on this list, I met with Dr. Hahi again today, special education is an ever-evolving challenge as, as uh, current uh, IEPs are being reviewed and looked at, uh, we may be looking at uh, uh, contemplating adding, uh, modifying, or changing some of our service delivery in special education, all right? Um, and, and, there, and therefore, I, I want to you know, clearly say that there's, a, there's an issue that we may have to address here with some special education personnel uh, to do that. Uh, new contracts, we've incorporated the teacher's contract We've looked at, you know, Don has done a good job of incorporating steps, lanes, and percent increases in the, in the preliminary data uh, uh, of people. So we, we have a good sense of what those line items look like. You're currently going into negotiations with your support staff, so we don't, we don't know what the liability is on support staff. And then you're currently negotiating with your unit B and your leadership team for salaries for next year, all right? What I've, said to the, what I've said to the principals is that I want them to budget based on the needs of students. I do not accept a wish list from my administrators. I will not talk to you as a school committee about a wish list. I will talk to you about what's needed. If we need textbooks, we're going to talk about why we need textbooks and what it's going to cost. If we need technology, I'm going to talk about it because we need it for the students. This notion of wish list is not a good budgeting strategy Well, we, to, to and, and create the illusion that you don't need it. Right. So um, it's, it's, but I guess I'd like to also see, though, somewhat of where we'd like to go in the future with maybe some programs and things yeah. like that. So not a wish list, but a, you know, to make our school better, yeah. to service more children or in different ways. Mm -hmm. I agree, but it's, it's programmatic. You know, like the next one is a t technology implementation, a tech planner with a replacement. The, the technology numbers that I'm dealing with in the current budget, I can't reconcile. There's more money in there than, than I can uh, uh, go back to my technology people with. So I've asked them to tell me next year what do they need, all right? But it should tie back to 
what is our technology plan. All right. um, the next item is professional development. There's some initiatives we heard tonight about the literacy initiative. We've got to continue that. The state is asking us to uh, develop district determined measures as part of the ed eval process, but more it's part of the instructional and assessment process that we have to do. We have funding for mentoring programs. Uh, we had you know, almost 38 new staff that we brought on this year um, that we are in, in various stages of induction and mentoring. They will need some, some of them will need continuing mentoring next year. Uh, funding for school data teams, we've used race to the top money to fund those. Uh, we need to move away from that. The high school is starting the two-year NEASC process. There are certain costs to do an accreditation, and you've got to build them into your uh, budget. Benefits, we're working very hard, and we should have data on our, on our health and dental uh, liabilities for our uh, employees and retired employees uh, sometime, sometime after the first of the year, but by, by the beginning of February, as to how we can plug in some numbers uh, to do that. All right. That's the overview. I know some of you have this on your computer, but this is what it looks like mm -hmm. as a printout. Kathy has it. Yeah. Um, if I can, if you can call one up on your on your sheet, this is what I'm able to do, and I don't again know what you've seen in the past, but on budget sense, these on the on, on the account numbers are the state codes for accounts. They start at your 11 1100 account, which are school committee accounts. All right, and then go to the superintendent's office, the in, uh, administration, and we do them by buildings, all the way down to the 9400s, which are special ed uh, numbers. I can show you in this first column, I mean the second column, a little description of what that is. In the next column under fiscal 13 actual, what did we pay through June of 2013? What did we close out? So you see a real number there. And then in the next column, you see how much money is budgeted for this year how much money we've proposed, and right now the last column is just showing you the dollar difference, the dollar difference in, in, in order to cover that, all right? So that looking at those expenditures, now I will be honest with you, you know, a lot of this data was put in, and I am proofing it and working with the various, you know, people that have inputted the data, but the personnel piece was the biggest because that's salaries and benefits are 80 percent of the budget, all right? So, you know, it's not perfect, uh, and there's some accounts that really need, I need to go in uh, um, with Karen McGuire uh, to get some of the professional development numbers um, in here that need to be here. And then with Brad Monroe, you know, what is, what are some of the things that have been covered by Race to the Top Money uh, to go through that, all right? But you should be able to look at that. In some cases, you know, the, the, the principals have included some detailed listing of what does some of that money go for uh, in, in terms of providing uh, support, uh, not only for, for personnel, but also, you know, for the different programs. We had a number of accounts that were zeroed out. Not that we don't need it, but for whatever reason, there was no money in the budget. So you're going to see over in the right column, oh my gosh, look, you know, well, it's when you start with zero in fiscal 14, there should have been money in there, and there's not. Um, you know, to kind of kind of deal with that. So this is a format that is now entered in the work of Donna and Tina and even Monique to gather up all of this data was very helpful. Uh, but it continues to have to be proofed and continue, you know, to be updated and corrected. Um, but this format. And then in a summative way, I don't want to scare you, but if any of you did the math, the regular ed budget ends on page 127, mm -hmm. you know, it looks like there's only a, about a quarter of a million dollars increase or about 1.3 percent increase uh, in, in, the, in, the, in that budget. I just caution you, the, 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 the benefit numbers aren't in there yet, so it's kind of like level funded from the current year, so, you know, not good. The next one is the SPED budget because we run that separately. Uh, that looks like a 26 percent increase. It's not because what we have not pulled out yet is some of the special education line items will be supported by special education grants or circuit breaker money. My strategy is for you to see it all and then to back it out, all right? Because that way you know exactly how many people you have, where are they working, and it's not like you got 
grant-funded people like off the books. They're not, all right? So we will show them and then we will, we will back it out. So the bottom line will be impacted, but there will be a footnote, you know, in terms of these five people are going to be funded. Uh, they're going to be employed next year in the district, but their funding source is going to be the IDEA uh, uh, special education grant. Well, this is going to, these tuitions are going to be reduced because of circuit breaker, all right? But I think people should see it all, and then we fully understand what is your true cost of special education, budgeted money, grant money, circuit breaker money. So you kind of see it all uh, in, ter in terms of where we are. So that's the format. If I can, Mr. Chairman, you know, I, I know that you said you wanted everybody was going to be on a budget committee. Mm -hmm. So we really need to have a sense of what does that mean? Because I would like to propose that we schedule meetings beyond our regularly scheduled meetings that would just be for budget mm -hmm. and that we would focus those budget discussions on looking at inviting in the high school and the middle school principal one night, let them go through their budget. Mm -hmm. Bring back Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Decide to have them go through the elementary budget, all right, and then have Dr. Hahi in to talk about special education. So at a minimum, you know, for you to have the interaction, I would not suggest more than two people in a given night because you really don't want to be here till 10, 11 o'clock at night trying to have, you know, this discussion. It, it, uh, it, it really is important that they be able to talk to you about uh, the, um, the items that they're proposing and, and discussing uh, and for you to have that in interaction. So I would suggest those be meetings that if we could, we could start at 6 and try to allocate a couple hours so that the people can come. Uh, I don't want them to feel like they're defending the budget as much as they're responding you know, to your questions and concerns, but they're giving you an education of what, what does that really entail mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of those, those expenditures. The other area, and, I, and I, I need guidance on it because the technology has not been something that the principals have been involved in. It was really something that the former superintendent, you know, handled. But, you know, we do have, we do have Phil Tupin uh, uh, as a technology person uh, and, and Brad Monroe you know, I think, I think that is another area that we might want to bring, you know, uh, Phil and Brad to a meeting to kind of talk about it uh, in, in terms of that. The other piece is Brad can also talk about, you know, what's the impact of losing the race to the top money, you know, and what, what's the impact on, on uh, some of the loss of those funds uh, to move forward. So it's pretty ambitious to do it. And then I know the transparency of saying to the people in the town, you know, when we get to a budget, you know, then, you know, I, I don't have a problem circulating this as a public document, but it, it's not a budget. This is preliminary information, preliminary information, and a budget is when we start really finalizing, you know, the, the numbers in, ter in terms of need, in terms of where we are, because there are going to be certain discussions that we're going to have to have relative to personnel changes, uh, additions, deductions, you know, in terms of, of uh, what we need to do, some of that. You know, that, that's going to have to be discussed and then, you know, the, the budget at that point can be put together based on those decisions uh, to deal with it. Any questions? I think it's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, I, feel, I feel in one way we're a little ahead of my schedule because originally when I put the ske to schedule together uh, uh, in December, I thought we would just be able to kind of look at personnel, fixed costs, but I really... I really think the principals and, and uh, Donna and uh, Tina, Por uh, Tina LaCroix and uh, Monique have helped pull it all together. Uh, so this was a yeoman's effort. But once in, it can be easily manipulated. That's the good thing. Right. You know, once, once this document's created, it can be easily manipulated and, uh, and uh, we can make adjustments uh, to the budget. All right? And we can go live if we want to invite Donna to be with us as we do the budget, we can go live and actually, you know, she can be making those adjustments on the computer. That's great. And yeah, we can we can have it printed, you know, as we go as we go about it. All right. So. Could we tentatively schedule something? Well, again, that's January? that's my suggestion. We're we're scheduled already in January. January 9th. The ninth. The ninth. 
I think one meeting in January, mm -hmm. and I think I think we should try to uh, get another one in um, at the end of the month. I only suggest the end of the month because of the uh, of the uh, chapter uh, seventy-eight. You want to stick to Thursday, so maybe Thursday the 30th? Um, whatever the pleasure of the committee is. <clears throat> you said, what did you say, January 30th? That's the last, Ooh, that's the last, last Thursday, Thursday in the month. Yeah. yeah. Just want to we go for that one? We have a meeting the 9th and the 23rd. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do we have two in January? Yeah, for yeah. NASDAQ, I think. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting until the 30th to have administrators come in, though, are we? I, or will I, that be after? Uh, whatever the pleasure of the committee is, we won't. I won't be ready for them to come in on the 9th. Yeah. They right there. I think we. I think we're scheduling those meetings right now. Yeah. So then the 30th, I'm assuming, would be, would be two. the two high school, the middle school, and the in the high school coming in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not a full meeting. It's just budget. With yeah. Just just the budget with principal starting at six, going for a couple hours. Yeah. Is the thirtieth work for people? Sure. Sure. Can, can we just review that again? We get the ninth, the twenty-third. Ninth, twenty-third. Yep. Our regular meetings. Our regular meetings, and it's going to add the thirtieth. <coughs> would it be possible then to send us the budget ahead of time? We could just, you know, not go over it in detail. But just you get you you we we can sub this by by school. Okay. So you can get the okay, pages. So we'll get that. Yeah. 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 And, and if possible, we could fire them questions ahead of time so they're not to think yeah. on their feet. Yeah. Right. I would get I would get you the printout. I'll try to get you the printout the week before and ask yeah. if you have any questions. If you can email them that way, the principals can come and and, uh, and talk to you about um, about uh, their. Six uh, o'clock is good for people. Start at six. Mm -hmm. Here, right? Here, yeah. More than, yeah, I don't. we we'll do it. I think we can save a lot of time this budget year if we round to hold dollars. It, I think there's one idiosyncrasy in budget sense. <laughs> Every once in a while you'll see on a personnel that uh, we are budgeting to hold dollars, but Donna, because of the contracts, she has to make these little penny adjustments, okay? So they're in there. She ignore. can make them. We just don't want to see them. Right. Let's keep it simple. We have. I said whole dollars, and she said, "I know, but if I take something from payroll, and if somebody's working, they actually are in pennies. Yeah. So we have to yeah. we have to account for it. All right. I want to naively assume we're not paying you in pennies. <laughs> Nickels. Mm -hmm. Nickels will work. We are depositing pennies. Yes. Um, but she corrected it. You will not see, a, you'll, you'll see whole dollars, but every once in a while there's one of these adjustments that she had to make 26 cents, 30 cents, 13 cents. For the yeah, no. for the rounding. That's going to save us one meeting right there. Yeah, it's February. I have, uh, in February is, uh, I have the, um, the 13th is our regular meeting, and uh, I have us on the 27th, 27th as well. And the week prior to that is school vacation. So should we try to do some Tuesday, Thursdays, or just? <clears throat> I think in February, I'm, 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 again, I have not been through your agenda. I think giving up one of the February meetings to budget makes sense. I and that's not to say that you can't have right. have some business, you know, on that. But um, so stick with the 27th if we are thir scheduled to have that as a budget. The 27th. We'll just do the 27th as a budget, and no. the 13th as a regular meeting. We'll see where we are. So the 20, 13th and 27th, no additional. Yeah. But again, we change the time to start at 6. six. Yep. We have some flexibility as we get into the new year to yep. look at what our oh, agenda yeah. is and mm -hmm. decide if we want to have one meeting yep. on specifically budget, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Right. How long ahead of time do we have to announce that to, to for meeting laws? 48 hours. Yeah. Oh, that's all? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have time. But just, just for posting purposes, I'm, I'm going to change these meetings to start you know, at, at uh, 6, mm -hmm. um, that gives us time to uh, 
put the principals on first and uh, you know kind of deal with it so we have actually already have 13th scheduled as a workshop versus and the 27th is scheduled as a public meeting I we're all public it's just a, I know yeah. I'm just saying that right. that's what's on that schedule yeah. well, and again what you've got to overlay in this is then you've got the superintendent search mm -hmm. so right. the process just going cross checking it there right but I mean are we giving ourselves enough I'm just basing it on, what, on the meetings we had last year yeah because if we're looking at February so we just scheduled two February 27th is our second March 12th is our open hearing right so I just feel that panics me <laughs> I, I, I need your help I, I honestly yeah, don't I mean, know I think I think when we get into January we're gonna have to say well there's gonna be some Tuesdays we're gonna have to do yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. another day yeah. Yeah. The problem, the problem in, in addressing the budget is until you know the revenue side, right? Because about fifty percent of your budget is dependent on Chapter Seventy Eight, which affects the assessment. So we really, we can't tell the communities what is this actually going to cost us because we don't have those numbers. But there's no reason to believe at this point that the governor is going to follow. A, file, a filing of House One at the requisite time in January, and uh, and uh, you know being able to have some generated numbers by that by the end of January from the Department of Education, which I think you know will give us a, which will give us a good uh, look at where we are on the revenue side. Okay, and I will have you know the the uh, quarterlies uh, for you next month. So. You'll, you'll be able to see where we are with all of our other revenues by as of the end of December. Okay. I just you know any and any thoughts you have about you know how to um, you know improve or get more information. Uh, the most important thing for me is is uh, lead time to go uh, researching and, and pulling information together. All right. And I am sharing this information. The principals got this, and I also sent copies to the president of the teachers' association. And I think, Mr. Juba, and to check if I sent it to the presidents of the support staff. I honestly don't remember. I'd have to look. Okay. All right. You're I set. have not sent it to the liaisons because I didn't consider this budget. Yeah. This is just information. Mm -hmm. But at some point, just you just out. tell me what what when you want it to be sent out. And it's not really that important, but the the format through the budget sense, um, and we can get it as a PDF, which is great. Yeah. But there's got to be a way where we can make like a table of contents so we can kind of pop around it without. Because <laughs> yeah. right now, like you just kind of. Yeah, <laughs> um, if we can do it by, uh, and yeah. there's a. There's a way to sort it. Let me talk to Donna and see if we can train you on how to sort it. Well, there's a sorting, but there's also because we get it as a PDF yeah. um, to be able to make bookmarks within it. Okay. Yeah, it, it, and so I started looking at it last year to, to see, but so would we want I it can't by do it. Or by it must come building? through like a Crystal Reports I, program. I don't know. I don't. And I think it's kind of got to be done at that level. Yeah. But to be able to, you know, say, okay, we're looking at the high school, we impress it, right. and we get to the high yeah. school and things like that, yeah. would just make it easier. Mm -hmm. yeah, building's best. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the large account number, every one of these numbers stands for something. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle, there's a, there's a four-digit number which corresponds to the state code. But then the other numbers are location codes which respond to the individual schools or district. So, but I made a note. You know, to talk to Donna about how I can help you with that. And I'll look at Brad. Probably can pull yeah. it. I'm sorry. Brad can probably. Uh, this is not a program he works with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll look a little too. In budget, online. budget sense is a program we purchase, so it's it's not it's not a um, um, it's not a program that that is in a in a database we can manipulate it's not like an access or something like so that. so you just you're doing everything through budget sense yes. you're not pulling it out and doing through like crystal reports to I, yeah yeah we have we have a we have a, a set menu of things that we can do and on personnel there's mm -hmm. there's certain things you can get mm -hmm. from budget sense okay. that are fixed we use that they're, too they're built into the reports yeah. 
Right. And there, but there is ways that you can you can sort yeah. within that. It's just a matter of figuring out, right. and I'll sort it whatever however we want it. Okay. No, I mean, as I said, the nights that the that the respective principals come in, we'll just have the budgets related to their to their location, to their location. You know. If you send it to us um, via um, computer, can can we get it landscape? Because I know yeah. last year <laughs> it was like I, you I'm still looking it, at it sideways. You couldn't turn it sideways. This, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> when you send it through the copy machine to make it a PDF, yeah, you put it the, if you can send oh it in my, landscape. Because it, yeah. it came up sideways, so unless we had the paper copy, we were just kind of. Wendy. That's why I'm like this. Oh, right? Just yeah, I did do that. Yeah, mine keeps flipping, though. Brian? It keeps turning, though. It keeps yeah. turning. Yeah. It keeps turning, though, so it, you can't even turn your iPad. We, I, will have, I will have Bridget and Donna oh, get their heads together. It's a little easier. Thank you. I thought I was going with that problem. I, I'm visually challenged on my iPad. It's much too small for me. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I can't get smaller than that. So, yeah. It's still sideways, though, so right. it's a little neck cramp. <laughs> yeah. We will, uh, we will work on the formatting Thank for you. you. Okay. To pull good, it I'm good. Okay. Uh, Thank you. On the budget. Yep. Um, That's it. Second public forum. Seeing no one, we'll move forward. Um, subcommittee reports. Superintendent search. Diane and Aaron. What's Moving along. What's appointments? If you had any. It, oh. Do you have any coming up in the next week? No. <laughs> I just thought you missed it. No, I was purposely skipped it. There's nothing there. Quite frankly, we, we should really take that off. I made a circle to take it off. And the, and the second public forum. You know. Right, and there's a third one over here, too. So I think we only do two. Yeah. yeah. So we'll skip that one, too. We'll, since get, we'll, one we'll just do one public forum. Mm -hmm. We've gotten the data back from the um, NESDEC as far as the um, survey results of community members, um, teachers, yeah. others, and you have a packet. Um, and so when we come back on the 19th, they will be going over those and, and they'll have analyzed them and um, be putting together a successful candidate profile. Um, we are still waiting to hear from um, some people that we're hoping will s sit on the search committee. So who are we looking for right now uh, that, that is left on our screening committee that we have to kind of reach out to again? Town of Blackstone elected or um, appointed official. Um, all of the parent organizations, we have not heard from any of them, or the PAC. Well, we need a name for PAC. We have PAC. We, ha we, we know they're attending. We just don't know who. Mm -hmm. um, I have the MESPA name. Okay. I, I, I do oh. have that. But yep. oh, okay. um, I was at the meeting when they. Uh, we need a central office administrator. Hmm. Not many of them. Again, I, I don't think I should be involved in the process. No, and there's nobody else. We're using the administrator, just an, somebody but from the administrator team. A principal. So in a principal, you said it'll probably be yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. I'll have that name for you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We have the support staff. The public official from Blackstone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. The student, the student Tom student. indicated. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll figure that out. Yep. Um, a business person? Did we reach out to any? It says perhaps. Uh, you have anybody who you've already picked who's also a business person? Some people they talked about mm -hmm. people yeah, having a role. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. See, I didn't. I didn't see the list that it was sent to. Like, who was invited to respond to this? Well, that's why they're looking at dual roles. Yeah. You know, like a parent teacher. <coughs> you know, they could be the same we're not person. Careful. We'll get up to twenty. No, mm -hmm. we're not going to end up with twenty. Well, we only have four. <laughs> <laughs> we only have how many? I think we need more. We have four well, confirmed. Four committed. But we four have names. right. So and the number that we want we is are gonna, we're gonna nine work to on eleven. Can you tell us who the names are? Uh, can I say that? Are they for Go public? Ahead. Yeah. So for the support staff, we have um, Karen Baralt. For the Teachers Association, we have Kathy Jones. For Millville Public Official, the Board of Selectmen um, chose Jerry Finn. Mm -hmm. And for MESPA, it's Kathy Stearman. And that's all I have on my list. So, so between um, now and next and Thursday. Right, in the two of you. In the, between now and next Thursday, 
um, I'll work with you two to get a list of who we need to reach out to, and between the three of us, we'll reach out. Yeah. I'll gladly reach out. Right. I just want to make sure I reach yeah. out to whoever received the letter. Yep. Okay. And, and I don't know who that would so be. So it sounds like Millville stepping up here. I think the challenge should go to the folks uh, at yeah. Blackstone. Millville stepped, up. Millville stepped up again, right? <laughs> wow. Let's go Can I just Blackstone ask one folks. quick question about the um, – the qualifications and the building of that of that resume and what we're looking for. Are we going to sit down and discuss like the roles of, of superintendent week. and assistant superintendent? We're gonna confirm. We're but, gonna... but I know we're doing this as superintendent, but you know, discussing the role of both in in a in a format that you can visually see, I think it will give us a better idea of how the committee wants those roles handled. Um, if we just create a list for the superintendent, it's it, it's almost like the visual is going to be a superintendent and then whatever's left, you know, instead of making that those two roles. I, I think it's important as a committee that we sit mm -hmm. down and discuss w how, you know, the roles that we want both of them to take so that it's not kind of like mishmash. Yeah. That's a good before, point. I mean, I would think before next week, before we start that role with superintendent. So, um, so that we had a discussion uh, at our previous meetings regarding what direction did we want the superintendent for this search. Uh, you know, we we went around saying business or no business. But I don't think we ever concrete mm -hmm. put it up, saw it, and said this is what we what we're looking for. Um, and I think that's important to do before we get there, before we sit down and look at that role for superintendency. Okay. Okay. So do you want to work? We could work on that. I can ask. I can. You know, I've, I've given you information in the mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. job descriptions from other right. communities. Uh, I can ask Dr. Uh, Betancourt to kind of facilitate that with you mm -hmm. as part of the workshop next week. Right. Because in the packet you got tonight, mm -hmm. there is kind of a general over right. overview of, of um, the role of the superintendent mm -hmm. in that packet. Right. So he's got, he's got a working document in, in that packet. I don't think we need a clear, a clear idea of what we want, but I want to do, I do want to stay a little flexible. If mm -hmm. the right candidate comes yep. down and didn't have one packet mm -hmm. that yet one piece that could go to the assistant superintendent right but unless right in, I mean I'm a visual person so unless I visually see that moving around we can no, we can say that over and over again but I, I moving it around and visually seeing like these particular roles I think would be beneficial to at least have and be working with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no I think we have to yeah. all right great anything else Aaron yeah. I think we're moving along. Nesbeck is doing a wonderful job. So yeah. Okay. Um, strategic planning. We're still waiting. Well, yeah, we're pl we've been we we're talking to the administrators tonight. We're gonna try and get a meeting together. Looks like after the holidays January, to yeah. okay. uh, powwow with the administrators on how to move things forward. Okay. Um, regional agreement. We had the conversation tonight about the population growth, and so I think the next steps that were suggested would be to um, organize a study group for looking at enrollment trends. Mm -hmm. And the group that you previously arranged, is that gone to the wayside or what? I, I, I mean, I still have that full list. There's never been any contact to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think before we do that, we need to, as a committee, decide what direction we want to move in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we need to schedule that quickly because it's December now, and I know we have other things going on, mm -hmm. but I think we do have to kind of, if we need to schedule a separate meeting for that, let's schedule it because I don't want to be sitting here in April saying well, we still got to really figure out the direction that we're going, mm -hmm. you know, because then it's a whole year, mm -hmm. the year's gone. Now I just we're think wait. before we pull in Calendar? the 30 to 50 names that I have mm -hmm. and start trying to go full force, that we need to make sure as a committee where we want to be. So we need to put that on the next agenda then. Uh, the next next month's agenda. I want to be careful not to be rushing, though, because this is not a rushing process. Yeah, I'm not it's rushing anything, group. but I, I, it we, seems we've like we're this, we've had this discussion. It seems like we're at a standstill, though. We, we are at a standstill, right. absolutely. Yeah. We're waiting for the population um, trend, and we got the population trend, mm -hmm. so that's why we were at a standstill. Right. So I think it's important with that we don't, I mean, we're, we're trying to create trust with our community, and I mm -hmm. think we need to be very careful with rushing things. I think we've done that in the past. And yeah, I don't, I don't think, I'm not saying to rush anything, but I, I think we have to move a little quicker than we're, we're, we're doing right now in terms of now that we have the data let's get together and as a committee because I've heard that three times now we have well, to we figure out as a yet. committee that's why you heard it three times we haven't had that discussion as a committee yet okay so we're, we're going to do that at the next month's meeting so just to be clear we're going to talk about enrollment and regional agreement 
Mm -hmm. Is that the way to phrase it on the agenda? Uh, well, I think we already have the enrollment discussion. Are we wait? Are we? Uh, I think well, I'm going to I'm going to try to get you more data on Millville. Yeah. We'll so break it down between the two. You think? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I I mean I know from my reason for saying that is before, like I was just going to say before we I contact say I, I believe it's about thirty people, um, and for myself and Wendy before we start putting these meetings together and you know putting the extra time into it. Where do we, what, what is our goal as a committee mm -hmm. on the regional you, You're agenda? absolutely correct on that. Before we grab all these people's time. Yeah, I'm not saying we got to grab anybody so yet. Right. I'm saying we gotta, we got to answer the question that we, we, we've been posing to this committee. Mm -hmm. from, now that we have some data, we need to answer that, at least sp have an answer to that question. Yeah. What is the focus and of there this? There are some other factors, too. Sure. You know, that I think we need to, that we need to talk about as a committee. Okay. Before we get the full Okay. So that that'll be on the next. That'll be the next full committee meeting. You're saying? Yep. Okay. January. Okay. Um, public relations. Um, Mike and I talked about um, in January uh, possibly scheduling a couple of Saturdays, where uh, moving off the um, suggestion of uh, from our the communities, the um, uh, FinCom and Board of Selectmen that came in, just to have some tours of the building, maybe combining the elementary mm -hmm. schools for one Saturday combining the middle school and high school for another Saturday just to have the public come in and go through and, and maybe video it uh, or so so Mike's working out some details and the thought process on that so we'll have, we'll have more on that at, at the January meeting um, but that's really a good direction that we need to go to from the from I think it was Russ Wells who brought it up um, so that is the public relations um, budget we met um, uh, we met with uh, people from Millville Blackstone, as well as um, uh, the president of the union, Mark Juba, came to the last meeting, and we really went over some educational stuff around Chapter 70, how how it how it gets um, planned out, and so forth. So uh, we're looking to kind of continue that um, that focus and uh, kind of the education on the process. So uh, that's that's going well. I'd like to get more members. If anyone's anyone in both communities want to uh, continue to join that, there's been a um, web link on the um, site as well as uh, um, on our Facebook page. If anyone's interested in joining that, please just email me and we'll, uh, we'll move forward. Facilities? Uh, so facilities, we're, we're kind of where you guys are at now. We've, we're backing up to say, you know, what is our mission? What do we want to do? We've got to really frame that out. We haven't done that yet. We, we do have some data that uh, was provided on our survey from the facilities. I still want to work on that. And, after the first of the year, probably review that with with uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Davis and. Uh, Could you send that out to the committee so we can all? Look yeah, at once it? I get into the format, then I want to share it. It's a little bit skewed, but um, but we also talked about just kind of backing up and saying, you know, what what do we want this subcommittee to to do? Mm -hmm. We kind of started off with some different things. I think we really need to frame that out so that we have some direction. So, we'll uh, look to have that in January. Okay. Uh, we'll move to committee forum. Uh, actually, not too much going on. I was at the uh, winter sports meeting last night. It was uh, pretty well attended. We met some of the new coaches, things like that. Good to see a lot of new athletes out there, but uh, not too much going on. Well, the last time I saw you two gentlemen, we were uh, freezing by the sidelines at the Thanksgiving game, and. Uh, you know, I, I want to congratulate, you know, not only the football team, but all of fall sports and the music department for all the uh, accomplishments that they had this, this fall. It was a very successful um, start to the year for, for all of them. And uh, it was exciting to be at that Thanksgiving Day game, although the results weren't what we were looking for, and it was cold. It was, I, I was watching the flutist because I have uh, an interest there, and I remember watching the – every time the, the – Flutists didn't have to play. They were blowing on their hands to keep warm so they could move their fingers when it came mm -hmm. to their piece. But, um, but that was a lot of fun. I also attended the uh, Colonial Feast over at MES, and uh, that's been going on for over 20 years now, and that's great where the fifth graders serve the seniors, and uh, it's a great community activity that uh, if you've never been, you should pop in next year and, and check it out. It's pretty cool. And um, just to mention, there's a bus out front here. There's Toy for Tots drives going on around, and... Uh, Probably not a lot of days left to contribute. So, anybody out there who would like to contribute, bring your toys down to any of the schools, I believe, and uh, they'll take the donation and get it to the right place. So, happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Nope, I got nothing to be on happy holidays. And yep, safe and safe and happy holidays mm -hmm. for everyone.
I echo that thought. Um, of course, happy holidays. Um, I, I know last time I mentioned the uh, fundraiser we were putting mm -hmm. together at Millville for the uh, Williamsburg Christmas event uh, was very successful. Thank you to everyone that came out. And um, if you weren't able to attend, it just popped up on uh, the YouTube page for BMR. And Mrs. Smith did a great job with her presentation. So if you're looking for some great entertainment, you could pop that on one night. And Do you know how much they mm -hmm. raised? Um, well over $2,000 for the scholarship fund. So, yeah, it was, it was a great a great night. So thank you again. Great. And I echo everyone's happy holidays to everybody. And uh, we continue to do the work that needs to be done. And um, we hope everyone has a great and happy holiday, whatever you celebrate. So now we're going to look at uh, going into executive session. So I'm looking for a motion to move to executive session for collective bargaining and school safety and, and some teacher contract language not to return to open session. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. So we have to put an uh, open roll call to go to executive session. Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. 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 And yes. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Stand.